Good Tuesday morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff, joined by our executive weather producer, Terry Ellison. Uh, for this discussion, what we'd like to do is hop on our CBS News Boston stream and talk about the weather, sort of just with no time constraints. We just love, nice yeah, just discussion. <laughs> Not so much a forecast, but just a discussion of what's about to happen. A little yeah, forecast in there. Yeah, of course. Um, so we have a lot going on. Um, not only here in Massachusetts, but nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're going to start with the cold. It is it's hard not very to. cold. I'm cold here. right now. I feel yeah. like I've just, my body's been in a perpetual state of cold, being cold like for the last couple of days. You just can't, it's hard to get warm. Once you step outside, you really feel it. It punches you in the face. Yeah. It's hard to warm up a little bit. It's one of those time frames where as long as you protect yourself, it's not like dangerous, but it is cold. You'll notice it. Yeah, and we're not, I mean, having been through a very couple mild winters, we're really not used to this yeah. kind of stretch. Uh, now, again, as you said, it's not record breaking. It's, I wouldn't call it historic by any means, but it's just cold. And it's been sort of persistent. It feels like every week we get a blast of two, three, four days yep. of below average temperatures. And, you know, this current uh, blast happens to be the coldest and most dramatic. So here we yep. go. And it's going to stick around for a couple of days yeah. too. So let's hop into the weather graphics and look at what we're dealing with here at WBZ. We do have a next weather alert in effect for the frigid temperatures around some of the coldest conditions sticking around through Thursday morning. Uh, we're only going to see some of those afternoon highs in the upper teens and low 20s and the overnight lows. Those are going to be at or below zero in single digits. It is cold. And this is where we started out. This morning was uh, frigid. And this doesn't even do it justice. I mean, there, there were several towns, even south of Boston, that snuck below zero. Um, 13 below in Orange. I think it was also a, a next graphic. I believe it was 13 below in Athol as well. Um, but look at all these towns, I mean, Acton, Newburyport, Wellesley, towns close to Boston even that were below zero this morning. Definitely the first time we've seen this in a bit. Yeah, for sure. When, when we talk about, you know, taking the precautions, making sure that you have your spigot on the outside of your house turned off, these are why, because you get this blast of cold air uh, like this. Yeah. That's where we could see some pipes burst. And a lot of folks just in the morning meeting this morning, a couple of folks uh, saying that their pipes were frozen and their pipes burst. So, you know, it's definitely that kind of cold. Yeah. Um, um, you know, so we definitely got to make sure that if, if you are, if your house is susceptible, maybe an older system, maybe like you said, turn the spigots on, even open the cabinets up near the, uh, near the pipes, a lot of different ways you can go about it. So there's a lot of times that we talk about the record high temperatures or record low temperatures, but kind of sandwiched in between that are record low max temperatures. So basically the coldest high temperature for the day. Yep. Um, that's where we could see, uh, for Boston, that's where we stand, 10, um, 10 for, for today and 13. Today and 13 for, not going to get there. Right. Um, but yeah. not, not, not to say, I mean, t um, tomorrow, I, I guess we could be, we might sneak into the teens. I feel like probably both days Boston's going to be right around 20. Low yeah, 20s. yeah. Um, but this is just to say that it's cold, but it's no, we're really near record cold. And Boston for a low... We may see single digits tomorrow morning, but nowhere near, obviously, three below. Right, uh, right. Yep. Um, so, and I did talk with um, the Parleys up at yeah. Tingsboro, the Parley Farm folks. Um, so, just by thinking about, is this kind of cold something that we could, should be concerned about? And remember back in February, a couple of years back, we had that really, really cold stretch that, you know, kind of took out a lot of the peach trees and, and, the, and the crops. They said everything is dormant. Um, you know, they'd have to get down way below the forecast thresholds right now to have any sort of concern. And, and the big concern a couple years ago was we were mild right. and then we got, it was around Valentine's Day, a shot of very cold air. I think we hit like 14 below or something like that, 10 below. It was 10, and below, 10 below in Boston, Boston I yeah. think, but a lot of the burbs were like 18 below. Right. Uh, and, and so we had that period where they weren't so much asleep and then right. and then they just get shocked yeah and um, they may, maybe started opening up a little bit but yeah this winter has been more of a quote-unquote normal winter i guess yeah. you would say it's been pretty much cold throughout so really no concern about crops thankfully um but it has been the coldest winter meteorological winter in seven years uh this 33.2 is our average temperature uh over the last say 51 days or so um, and that is much colder than last year. And again, the coldest we've seen. And this just goes more to how we've been saying it's just been kind of persistently cold. Yep, yep. That's one thing that we look at too when you talk about degrees matter in winter time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so important when it comes to our snowfall too. And so when you compare winter last year to this year, we have more below average days. Uh, you 
have more chances for snowfall actually sticking around and, and sticking. Um, and we'll get to the snowfall in just a little bit, but here's a comparison from this year on the top to last year down below 29 below average days. And we still have um, a lot of winter yet to go. Uh, compare that to 15 up to that point. Right. I mean, basically we've had double the number of below average days this year compared to last year. And if you look at the average highs and lows this year, average, you know, 39 and 27, 44. So we're, we're really averaging about four, five, six degrees per day warmer, or excuse me, colder than we than we yeah. were last year. So uh, I don't think that anyone needs to, we don't need to tell you it was much milder last year. You know, uh, no doubt about it. Now let's get to tonight. Yep. Um, these, we, we, they'll probably Probably be this may be actually kind of conservative. It may even be slightly colder than this in some areas, as we saw last night. Yep. Um, but I think this will be the first time that Boston sneaks into the single digits in a couple of years. Yep. It's going to be close. Boston's a little bit different than the, than the suburbs. It tends to hold the heat in a little bit more. Um, but if we do slip uh, below 10, it would be the first time in 717 days. So. Pretty remarkable to think of. That's a long, so that's, a couple of years. That's a long Almost stretch. A couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Um, so but tonight would be the night. Tomorrow morning, I should say if that were to happen. Uh, not only that are we forecasting some really chilly temperatures in the overnight, but also our springboard is cold and we're only going to yep. get into the upper teens and low 20s for our afternoon highs tomorrow. Uh, you factor in the wind chill feeling like the single digits and teens at times and we're back to the single digits heading into Thursday morning too. Maybe not quite as harsh Thursday morning. Um, we start we start to I don't want to say moderate, but we start to come back to sort of seasonal averages and 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 Thursday as you can see we finally, a lot of towns will break the freezing mark for the first time in several yeah. days. I think some of the towns north and west of Boston may pro may stick below 32 until uh, Friday afternoon, but that would be, what, four or five days in a row, consecutive days below yeah. freezing. Yeah, really, a really good stretch. Uh, not only are we dealing with the cold, but there are some places along the Gulf Coast dealing with the cold, <laughs> stretching really from inland Texas, central Texas, all the way up into the mid-Atlantic. They're dealing with the system. That orange color you see there, that's a blizzard warning. That's the first time that the Gulf Coast has ever had a blizzard warning issued for it. Remarkable to think of. So from Beaumont to Lafayette, Tech, uh, Lafayette Louisiana, dealing with blizzard-like conditions. Uh, I mean, I don't think we can stress enough how unusual that is. Um, you're talking about that Lake Charles, Lafayette, uh, Beaumont area. I mean, that area, if, if any kind of warning's gonna happen there, it's gonna be a hurricane warning. Right. Or, or you know, something yep. like that. To have a blizzard warning, and not only that, but winter storm warnings stretching from central Texas all the way up to the, the Carolina coastline. Right. I mean, we're talking some of these areas could see four to eight inches of snow. Let me tell you something, if New Orleans gets four to eight inches and they're well on their way, I, I think they're just going to have to sit and kind of be like, well, wait we're going to have to just wait for it to melt because yeah. we got nothing. No to, infrastructure. There's yeah. no infrastructure to, to handle that kind of thing. So it'll be interesting to see just just how long it'll take them to sort of quote unquote dig out down there. One of my favorite people in this world, Amy Sweezy, she is a meteorologist from Florida, has this book out called It Never Ever Snows in Florida. It's a children's <laughs> book. And I read that to some of the younger kids when I go on these school visits to like kindergartners, whatever. Uh, but notice from the panhandle of Florida all the way uh, to the uh, Atlantic coastline, mm -hmm. there are winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories out. This is what they're dealing with right now. So Florida, it never ever snows in Florida. Except, Except in 2025. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so New Orleans getting in on some of the snow right now. I saw Bourbon Street. I saw some cameras from there. They're already dealing with some coatings of snow. As Terry mentioned, well on their way to yeah. a few inches of snow at the very least. Very dynamic <sighs> system. The, the leading edge of this is that polar air that mm -hmm. we're kind of being brushed by even. I mean, yeah, it's cold up here for sure. But we're not dealing with some of that snow. I mean, it's cold. It's snowing in the, in parts of the Gulf of Mexico, and this that so that darker blue, technically by this model, is a three to six inch forecast. Uh, those models can, you know, it, I, I would not show that the entire area is getting three to six, but several of them will. And again, these are areas that it's not like they have a, a fleet of plows waiting to go out and plow right. the roads. Um, so I would assume a couple of days of just sort of everybody hun hunkering down and you know working from home down there, like it, very very unusual. Perhaps the biggest snow for Louisiana in 65 years yeah. or so. Yeah, pretty big, remarkable to think of. Pretty big deal. And as yeah. you said, so there's sort of a boundary that extends that the the Arctic boundary that came through here is now offshore, but extends all the way up, you know, from New Orleans, from the Gulf, offshore. And over the next couple of days, you'll see, you can tell right where that boundary is. Right. It's fairly evident. Um, New England, now, we are thankfully sort of on the northern edge of the, edge of the thing. And 
uh, other than a few flakes on the or a little bit of light snow in the Cape tonight, you know, it, it's thankfully going to push out. There was a couple. There were late last week when we were looking at the weekend storm. We're like, oh boy, could this be a one-two punch? Right. Um, not going to happen here in New England, thankfully. Right. But another snowstorm right now would not be fun uh, for our area, to say the least. Um, my clicker is there. We go. Uh, so you mentioned the Cape and Islands. I think the Mid and Outer Cape Islands, Nantucket, perhaps getting the most of the snow, and we're talking a coating to a couple of inches uh, for those areas. Um, we'll see if we can if we can take the graphics full. Um, we can um, go ahead and look at that. But um, right now we're starting with some partly to mostly sunny skies. We will start to see those uh, clouds increasing as we go into the uh, coming afternoon um, with some of those snow showers the later evening hour. So uh, we'll go ahead and pause this at about 10 p.m. 10 p.m. seeing the mid and outer Cape, the islands uh, picking up on some of those first snowflakes. This is very light stuff, but enough to perhaps coat the roads. They may need to throw a little bit of salt down, but uh, pausing this at midnight, you see um, from the mid to the outer Cape, the islands, best chance to see any snow. Otherwise, it's mainly clear skies for us overnight for most of us inland. Yeah, my my thought earlier was if this thing backs up a little bit more, maybe a, a few more clouds are thrown back into southern New England and, and the, the clouds act almost kind of like a blanket, so we may not get as cold, but it, does, it doesn't look like that. It looks like the clouds and the snow is certainly just contained to the south coast and the islands. Um, and perhaps a, a, a coating to a couple inches down there, especially over Nantucket where it could get a little heavier uh, at times overnight tonight. So there's that sort of, I, I think if there two inches were to happen, it would probably be an Nantucket. Um, but right. nonetheless, uh, a little bit of an additional snow for the Cape and Islands. You only got basically coating to an inch from our last yeah. storm. Yeah, they were definitely not the bullseye spot for this past one. Um, so high pressure builds in. In the meantime, uh, we sort of get a reinforcing shot of cool air staying dry as we go towards the weekend. Uh, a couple of passing systems that we had been watching Friday at the moment looks pretty dry, um, nice and sunny for the most part. And then with high pressure building in uh, out to our uh, west, we should see continued dry weather at least through the weekend. Pretty decent weekend. Yeah, yeah I think a chance to do a little bit of melting, uh, highs low, probably low 30 <laughs> Saturday, mid mid 30 Sunday. So, uh, and with the sunshine, I think, you know, it'd be nice to get to clear those driveways off of Absolutely. anything that's kind of left on there. Hey, I mentioned this yesterday when I was in Copley Square. When we got those final numbers in yesterday, we got five inches of snow in Boston. That brings our seasonal total to 12 and a half inches. Not that the bar was very high, mm -hmm. but this already, winter 24, 25, already beats all of last year's. Uh, snow and the year before's snow. So we have 6.8 inches for this January. Um, yeah, Terry. Good. Yeah, but but as you said, um, and now we'll have. This is what you were referring to. Boston yes. Snow in recent years. Um, so with that 12.5, we're already have more snow in Boston this year than we've had in the last several years. Um, again, bar set very low. Yeah. Um, I, if you had to, now I'm going to put you on the spot. Sure. <laughs> If here we are, it's January 21st. Um, where do you think this? Uh, give me like a range. Like, how do you? What are your feelings? That, and there's a, yeah. a, a, you know, are we gonna? Could we possibly get close to average? Of course, I mean, we could. But I, I think that 2021. I, I like that number about 38. That's what I actually mm -hmm. said uh, going into this. Um, is about 40 inches of snow. Uh, I think that with the persistent cold that's around, I think it's only a matter of time before. We're not so much like nickel and diming. We'll get a good one. We'll break the streak that we have going. I think between 30 and 40 inches. Yeah, I think for the that's re I think that's reasonable. Um, you know, of course, one storm could change the whole landscape. Absolutely. Right? You got yep. a big one, and, and uh, suddenly you're you're nearing average, or the big one misses. And Which is exactly what 2122. We had the big blizzard. Right. Um, so three years ago, Boston picked up. Tw uh, it was 23.5 right. inches or something. That so one misses. That one misses, and yeah, all of a sudden it's back like to a 30 inches. Year, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I tend to agree. I feel like. Um, I think we're going to do all right here for the next, say, six to eight weeks. There are some signs that we may get a little bit milder come February, but I feel like the models keep sort of pushing that out a little bit. Like it looks yeah. like, oh, we got one more week of this, and then the pattern, and that, oh, looks like we got another week of it. Looks like we got so it could be one of those winters that just the cold kind of keeps persisting. And if that happens, you know, we're bound to get a couple more snow right, events. Right, right. Um, totally changing gears. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed that last week. The moon and Mars were like fantastic, They're very close together. Um, but this right now, what's going on is kind of cool. Like at, after sunset, and this isn't just tonight, this is really for the next several days, several weeks, 
whole bunch of planets in the sky. Uh, yep. Um, looking from sort of east to west, if you will, on this map. Um, you got uh, four planets right here. There are others that are out, like Mercury, Uranus, but they're very hard to see. You need a telescope. These are the ones that are much easier to see, much more visible to the naked eye. So there's something cool if you're out and about, not that you would be out and about t after sunset tonight. It'd be yeah, cold. it might be a bit chilly. Um, but just kind of a cool sight to see in the sky. Uh, check it out. Maybe send us a pic if you get a good one. Yep. Yeah. Um, if you can see Jupiter, check out the Great Red Spot. I always love pointing it out to kids, like that's just a giant cool. storm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so your seven day forecast looks like this. We have next weather alerts in effect for the next three days. Notice those overnight lows in the single digits to below zero. Afternoon highs generally in the 20s, but feels like temperatures teen single digits at times. Friday, Saturday starting to moderate a little bit. The weekend is pretty nice. It will be cool, but it's turning fairly nice. And then into next week, we have uh, temperatures returning looks, back looks to the 30s. Downright balmy, 36 yeah. degrees, 35 Which degrees. is average, right? It's a, about yeah, average. About average. Uh, so it'll be nice <laughs> to get back to average for a little bit. Um, but I do think I don't see, again, any major warm-ups in the, in the long range for now. In fact, there are some models indicating next weekend another big, another big shot of cold. Yep. So we'll see. Yeah. We have a little ways to go this winter. Fun times, yes. fun times. So uh, be safe out there as you go out and about. We did get some melting done yesterday, and some of that could have refrozen. So just yeah. take it easy as you head outside. A lot of accidents this morning, Absolutely. too. Yeah. Um, but for now, I'm meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff, Terry Ellison. Have a great day, everyone.